In this video, I'll show you how to fire random events based on these weighted sliders here. And to keep our examples grounded in something that feels usable for a game, we'll fire these events when we open a chest. And we'll either spawn in a bunch of coins, some enemies, or a health potion. Ready? Let's go. So here's our opening scene. We have a chest that you can interact with once you get close enough, and if we press our interact key, it will open. I'm not going to go through all of the base code behind what makes this interactable because that is outside the scope of this tutorial, but I have covered how to set up interactable objects before, so if you want to know how to do that, then you can watch this video. So the only code that we have here is handling the actual opening of the chest object. What we care about is this interact function here, which gets called whenever we press our interact button and interact with something. So what we want to do in here is we want to pick a random event and fire it off. And there's going to be two pieces to this. And the first one is to pick a random event based on weights. And the other is the actual event logic, like instantiating the objects, etc. So first we'll handle the picking a random event. So what we're going to do is actually outside of this class, we're going to set up a new class. And we'll need a string. And a drop chance. And we'll need to add the unity engine.events namespace at the top so that we can add a public unity event in here. And to make all of this serializable, let's add system.serializable at the top, which means that if we set up public variables for this class, they'll actually show up in the inspector. And up here in our original class, let's set up an array of chest interactable events. If we go into our inspector, let's make it three. And let's fill in the string here. And what I really like about this is that the element is going to get named to the string, which keeps things looking nice and organized. Now that we have that, let's actually select a random event. So we're going to set up a function for that, and we'll call it right after we open a chest. And first, we want to calculate the total drop chance. Then we want to pick a random number between 0 and that total drop chance. And now we want to have a cumulative drop chance. And to do that, we're going to loop through all our chest interactable events and increase our cumulative drop chance by that event's drop chance. And if our random number between zero and the total is less than or equal to that cumulative chance, then we'll fire the event. And then we'll return because we no longer need to continue this function after that. So for example, let's say we set all three drop chances to one. So we're gonna pick a random number between zero and three. Then we go through each event. Now this is one. Is this less than or equal to that? No, okay, then let's keep going. Now this is two. Is this less than or equal to two? No, then it's gonna be the last one. I hope that makes sense. Let's set up some quick debugs to test this out with. So we'll set up a function for each one and put a debug.log statement inside. Now in the inspector, we want to drag in the chest and select the appropriate function call for each event. And let's set the same drop chance for all of them. There you see it picked a coin. Now it picked a health potion. So now we know that our math is good. It is picking random events. So let's set up the actual logic, starting with the coins. And I am going to go through all of this fast, so slow me down or pause me if you need to. To make this easier, let's just go ahead and set up all of the variables that we're going to need right now. So for the coins, let's add an optional delay in between each coin spawn. Both can look really cool depending on the style that you're going for. So we're saying if we don't want a delay between spawns, then just spawn them all. Otherwise, we do the same thing in a coroutine and just wait one frame in between each spawn. And this explosion here is what will make the coins look nice when they actually spawn in from the chest. We're picking a random direction, normalizing it, and then multiplying it by a force, and then actually applying it to that coin's rigid body. And to test that out, I've set up this coin prefab with a collider and a rigid body. And normally this would probably be a trigger and then you would collect it when your player touched it or something, but just for fun, I'm gonna leave it as a collider. And by the way, I'll include a link down below to any of the art assets that you might wanna nab from this project. They're all free to use. 
Now it is also worth noting that the coin is on the collectible physics layer and that layer cannot interact with other objects on that layer. This way we don't have coins bumping into each other and making them fly all over the place. So let's test this out with 100 coins with a delay. So to test that out, we're gonna set this to one and the other two to zero. Very nice. And here's what it looks like with no delay. Cool, so let's do enemies next. So we'll just iterate through a predetermined number of enemies to spawn, pick a random index, find a position for them to spawn at that's near the chest, and then spawn them in. I also made a little spawn particle system for them, so let's spawn that in as well. And since some of my enemies are different sizes, let's set the particle's local scale to be equal to the enemy's local scale. And we're gonna do the same thing to test. We're gonna set this one to one and the other two to zero. Awesome, there we go. Now for the health potion, I have this prefab that has a polygon collider and a rigid body. And for this one, let's just spawn it in and add a force directly upwards. That's all. Let's test. So now you can just adjust the weights accordingly. If you want them all to have an equal chance of spawning, then you can just set them all to one. But definitely play around with it and have some fun. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Like the video if you liked. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yonduk, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Wade, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons. Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Lanamata, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Neil, Ben Kerberger, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, Merler, and Anastasia Shamalina. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.